Welcome back to West Fork, friends. Well, today's tater planting day. After a long day of tilling yesterday, I was a little bit tired. Waking up now, though, it was 32 degrees this morning, or 36 this morning, 32 yesterday morning. But the days have been warming up to about 85, so we're good to go. We've got uh, seven boxes of seed potatoes here. This is all left over. Uh, seed from our garden last year. Last year we grew an obscene quantity of potatoes. We had uh, Yukon gems, uh, Kennebex, German butter balls, and then some uh, red Pontiacs. But anyway, there's uh, seven boxes left here. All uh, They all have runners on them. They're ready to go. So today we'll be using our Haas wheel hoe with a little plow attachment. That'll make uh, furrows for our uh, potato seed. Haas redesigned the Planet Junior wheel hoe. Made it a little heavier duty. And they still have them available at Haas Tools. Anyway, these are a great investment if you're serious about making food in your garden. And they save you a ton of work. So anyway, I'll just uh, follow my stakes there and uh, make some furrows. I'm putting these rows in 30 inches apart. I have to save room for hilling. And uh, potatoes get a pretty good spread. Yeah, and I like to take the hoe down the rows and clean things up a little bit. A couple high spots here where the uh, straw kind of balled up in the plow. It only takes a second to make it right. That looks pretty good. About ready to plant. Well, the two varieties of potato that I want to plant the most is this one. This is Kennebec. We've had really good luck growing them here. I can tell the difference because these are a little paler, their skin color. Also, you can cut them open and tell by the flesh. And uh, these, these are Yukons. I know we're going to want some of those. So I think we'll start with those. And I'm going to plant these heavy. I'm going to plant them about 8 inches apart. Because i got so many potato seeds. Might as well get them in the ground. Need to get a refill. The Yukons are a great all-purpose variety. They're, I love them baked. And uh, they're good fried with sweet onions. And uh, the Kennebecs, they're really good fried. Like for hash brown potatoes or uh, if you want to make french fries or oven baked fries they also bake nice they're more like a russet when you bake them they're kind of mealy like a russet i'm just picking through trying to find some of the fatter seed they grow a little faster you get a little better yield if they're a little bigger and these are good good stuff seed potatoes are really expensive so one thing I learned from my dad, save your old ones, unless you get a really bad disease, then you need to call them out and start with clean certified 
uh, potato seed. Some of those runners are pretty long, so I just try to lay them down in the lay them down in the trench there, so we can cover them with soil without hurting those runners. Well, I think we're gonna plant one more row of Yukons. These seed are just premium looking. Potatoes, they're the lifeblood of the homestead. At least around here they are. Because if you have a piece of venison or some grouse, maybe a few tomatoes from your garden, some potatoes with onions, it's just a meal that's just hard to beat. When I was a kid, my old man brought home a bunch of hogs. He was going to start a pig business. And he found out that the pigs wouldn't, um, wouldn't fatten up quick enough. And he couldn't afford to pour more feed into them. So we found some old boy that was growing potatoes in the field. And he had a bunch of cold potatoes. You know, ones that got damaged in harvest or were too scabby or whatever to sell. And uh, he'd sell them to you for 20 bucks for a pickup truck full, much as you could put on your truck. So we went out and we built these big sideboards on the back of the truck, big plywood sides. So when Dad got down there to that farm, he could get as many potatoes as it would fit. And we took them home and found out pigs won't eat raw potatoes at all, even if they're starving, because we tried. And uh, I ended up spending about six months cooking big pots of potatoes out on the campfire to feed to the pigs. So, that's how I learned how to cook spuds. The pigs like my cooking. Well, there you go. Four rows. These are about 45 feet long, thereabouts. And uh, there's enough spuds in here. We are going to have the mother load of potatoes this fall. Almost guaranteed. Unless we get some funky weather, like uh, Arizona weather or something. Even had a little bit of a short row of red Norlands. I think I told you they were Pontiacs, but these are Norlands. And they're a real scab resistant potato. Yeah, it's getting, getting hot out already. I got to get these covered up. And then uh, I got to get some water on them. Cool them down. Now, in a couple weeks, these will have leaves sticking up about six inches high. And we'll come back and I'll hill them up. I'll mound soil on both sides of the row. So the potatoes, so the new potatoes aren't exposed to sunlight. So you want them covered, you want them cool. And you don't want them exposed to sunlight, which makes them turn green. And uh, the green ones are toxic, they'll give you a belly ache. I don't eat green potatoes at all. Won't do it. But if you cover them up with soil, that's all it takes. 
That's one of my favorite meals is that first that first harvest of potatoes. Usually happens about the time the first tomatoes come on. About the opening of grouse season. You go up in the woods and get a grouse and come home and pick some tomatoes and dig a few new potatoes. That's just my favorite time of the year. Well, friends, that about does it. It's getting pretty late in the day, in the afternoon, and I'm going to go hide in the shade somewhere until it cools down. Maybe hit the squash patch later on this evening when it cools down a little bit. But uh, in the meantime, I've got five boxes of these seed potatoes left. I'm going to run them up to the little country store up the road here a couple miles and leave them on the porch with a free sign. Maybe... Uh, most likely some of these homesteaders up here will pick them up and uh, put them to good use. Well, thanks for coming along. I hope you all are doing great out there. Always appreciate your comments and your thumbs up. This is another episode coming to a close. So until next time, this is West Fork, over and out.